Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to the series of the lectures about financial markets and institutions. In this particular lecture, we are going to talk about definition of interest rates. Interest rates is the most watched variable around the world. Everybody, be it is a household, a firm, a company, the government, everybody looks at the interest rates and they decide about their economic decisions accordingly. Interest rates understanding is very, very important. The students and the people are the laymen basically are required to understand that what exactly is the interest rate and why this interest rate varies. We'll be following this up like in the, in the upcoming lectures. To begin with, if you learn about the definition of interest, now the interest is defined as the cost of borrowing. Let's say, for example, as you borrow some other kind of the commodities and the things, you pay a rent on them. Similarly, the conventional banking system and the conventional economics define the interest rate as the cost of borrowing. When you borrow money, when you use somebody else's money, you have to pay a cost of use on using that money. So formally, if you can see here, like you know, interest rates refer to the percentage of the principal amount that a borrower pay as a fee for the use of money lent to them. Like say, for example, when you borrow something from some people, you have to pay a rent on this. Something similar you do when you borrow money. Like say, for example, if I lend you money, I will be just for like you know for giving my use basically. I'm not be able to use that money for the time being. Like you know that is it is you. I need to charge some cost for it. It is the cost of borrowing or the return on on lending money. The person who lends money needs some compensation, and this compensation he gets in the terms of the interest rates. Interest rates actually has got a very, very wide applications and implications. Like say, for example, it affects the mortgages that you have to pay every month. It have to, it, it, like, you know, it affects your car loans, credit cards payments, and the return on your saving accounts and investments. So in that way, the interest rates may actually have got the effect on every kind of economic decision then that you make. Now, what is the significance of interest rates? The significance of interest rate is very much understood like you know by the people and if you don't understand that you basically may use may lose a lot of money interest rates basically decides about the cost of borrowing and lending actually like you know when you are planning for your next venture you should be knowing that how much money is going to cost you the money that you are going to borrow from the banks and financial institutions is going to cost you a lot of money you need to know what exactly is the cost and that cost you can determine through determining or just knowing the interest rates this particular interest rate has also got very much impact on consumer spending. The money that you earn is either consumed or saved. The saving is the saving decision is based on the interest that you earn on it. So it means that the savings basically, when you just change your savings, your consumption also changes. Similarly, the governments use this interest rate as a monetary policy tool whenever they want to control the demand side of the money or the demand side of the economy. They change the interest rates. So changing interest rate is basically a very handy tool for the modern day governments to control every kind of like you know fluctuations in the economy. Similarly, the bond prices, the bonds that we buy basically have got a very, very strong linkage with the interest rates. Like say, for example, the bond prices vary inversely with the interest rates, and your yields on your bonds basically depend on that what interest rate is prevailing in the market right now. Similarly, the foreign exchange rates also depend on that how much money is flowing in to get some interest rate in your, in, your, in your country. Like say, for example, if so many people are parking their money in your country to earn interest rates, it may basically increase the demand for your local currency. And that may basically affect your exchange rate. Similarly, the business profitability depends on the interest rates, how much interest they have to pay. That's what basically determines what actually is the profitability they are going to have from their projects. Now, we can distinguish the interest rate as nominal and real. The nominal interest rate is the, money, the interest rate in monetary terms. Like say, for example, it only represents the percentage increase in the money value without adjusting for inflation. Like say, for example, if you deposit your money with the bank and you get 10% interest on it, without looking at that 10% purchasing power, if you are just looking at just the 10%, that is a nominal interest rate. Similarly, the interest rate, which actually is a real, the real interest rate is actually determined in terms of your purchasing power. The nominal interest rate that you get, if you subtract inflation from it, you can find out the real interest rate. Real interest rate is a, is a matter of real value for the people. If the real interest rate is negative, so many people discourage investing or saving money with the banks. 
If the real interest rate is positive, like say for example, if inflation is lower than the interest rate, the nominal interest rate that you're getting from the banks, people actually encourage to invest and save more with the banks. The very important thing that you should be aware of, how do you measure interest rates? Because unless you are able to measure the interest rates, you are not able to determine what exactly the costs are you going to pay for the investments or the borrowing that you're making. Similarly, what amount of return are you going to get if you're lending this money to someone else? Now, to understand the interest rates, we need to understand the role of present value in investment decisions. You know, whatever the investments we make, we generally make investments for the future. And making investment is very different from buying, doing grocery. Like say, for example, when you are planning to buy something at the store, you may always judge that how much that worth. Like say, for example, if you are buying some kind of things, we see like you can always judge their quality against the price that you are going to pay. But what actually happens with the investment? Investment basically are, they accrue the profit in the future. You make your investments, you spend your money today, and the return that you get is tomorrow. So it means that like, you know, that there is a gap between when you make investments and when you get return. So you need to learn your future money in terms of today's money. To understand this particular kind of a situation, suppose you have $100. Now, suppose you have got two options available. The option A is that you can keep that $100 and do nothing with it. You just save this under the pillow or under your mattress. The second option is that you take this money into the market and you just invest somewhere, like be it in the bank or any other kind of the financial institution. Now, which option will you take? In the second option, you will earn some money. You know, like say, for example, if you take the option B, you are going to get some kind of return and that actually hundred dollars will become more than hundred dollars depending on the return that you get on that so it means that the money that you have got hundred dollar today may actually increase in the future if you are investing them wisely so it means that the money that you have got today actually has got more worth than but the same money that you have got in the future like say for example hundred dollar today is having having a lot of more value than hundred dollar after one year because if you have got hundred dollar today you can make investment with that $100 and you can earn some interest on it. So whatever the interest you will get, that will actually increase your value by more than $100 in the future. Now, to understand the concept of the present value, the present value actually concept is really important in financial decision making because you have to know that how much future money is worth today. So this present value allows us to determine the worth of the future cash flows in today's terms. We actually consider the term the impact of the interest rates on the opportunity cost of capital. The interest rate, like say, for example, if you are investing somewhere, money, like say, for example, you are buying a plant. The plant will get you some kind of profit. The plant will get you some kind of revenue and profits. Now you may compare the returns or the benefits that you get by investing in the plant with the money that you could get by just putting that money into the bank. So in that way, this present value is calculated on the basis of your opportunity cost of capital. How does we how do we do that? Like say, for example, if you look at the future value calculations to understand the present value calculations. In case of the future value calculations, like say, for example, you can see here that say, for example, if the interest rate is 10 percent. Now, if you invest your hundred dollars today, that hundred dollars will become one hundred ten dollars in the next period after one year, like after applying the 10 percent on it. Now, if this is a compounding process, the next time this 10% will be applied on $110. So you will be getting or like, you know, $122 around. So in a similar way, like, you know, that actually will be multiplying this. Sorry for the typo, it's just $121. And similarly, you know, like that will keep multiplying. So what, so what does this actually mean? It means that this timeline actually tells you that $100 today is having the same value as $110 a year from now. Similarly, $100 today basically has got the same value as $121 two years from now and $133 from three years now and so on and so forth. Now, if you generalize the concept of the present value, what do we do basically? You know, like to find out the present value, we discount the future cash flows with the discount rate. Now, intuitively, what this equation tells us that if you are promised one dollar for certain ten years from now, this ten one dollars would not be as valuable as one dollar today because you have got one dollar today that you may invest in the future. 
So you trying to just discount, like say for example, as you do the recounting of the like you know the world value by actually like finding out the future value. Similarly, you do the discounting by finding out the value from the future value to the present value. So here basically we are just actually dividing the future cash flows by the discount rate, and that basically will just help us determine that what is the present value in circumstances. Now, what does this present value show you? The present value shows that, like, say, for example, one hundred dollar today is like, you know, if you're just finding out the present value of the one hundred dollar from one year now, that will be one hundred dollar divided by one plus i to the power one, and after two years, that will be equal to one hundred dollars divided by one plus i to the power two. So, like, this one hundred dollar is worth more today than tomorrow. Like, say, for example, tomorrow they will worth less, even further less, and that will keep falling. That is a very kind of intuitive concept, which is just basically, you know, just very sometimes very difficult to for the students to understand in the first go. But you can actually master this concept by thinking about that tomorrow the money that you are going to get is not actually the is same in the world as today. Like say, for example, one dollar today is having more value than one dollar from one year now. Like say, for example, again, because why the reason is that, like, you know, for example, if you have got one dollar today, you can make investment with it. And you can earn interest rate on it. So if you want, if you have a future value, so you can find out the today's value by just reducing that value by the same interest rate. That's what we did. Thank you for joining us.